Welcome back, everybody, to another live edition of the DCL Duo podcast. Uh, brought to you by my path on winding travel. Can't forget that very important <laughs> message. But Sam, welcome back to our live episode. And we've got a fun guest tonight, right? We've got yes. uh, Leslie from Trips with Tykes with us. Yes, welcome, yeah. Leslie. And not just from Trips with Tykes, but also from Disney us, Deciphered Disney podcast. Deciphered. Yeah. Right. So as we were talking in our pre-show, we've got like three lawyers who also podcast about <laughs> Disney <laughs> obsessively. Get ready for it to get chatty. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Well, we're going to be talking about taking kids on a Disney cruise, making the most out of taking kids on a Disney cruise. But before we dive into the topic tonight, I wanted to send a very special shout out to some folks who help make our show possible each and every month. And that is our Patreon supporters. So Yay, a quick plug, if you, are, if you are not already a Patreon supporter and you listen to this show a lot and enjoy the content, it really helps us out, uh, helps us defray the cost of putting the show out and paying for platforms like StreamYard and, and other sorts of things that keep the show going. So uh, head over to patreon.com slash DCL Duo to check it out and uh, maybe consider joining one of our many, many membership tiers. But I want to send a shout out to all of our Patreon. So starting at the Animators Palette tier, because we love food on this show, we named all That's the tiers right. after the different uh, different restaurants different on the restaurants. cruise line. So <laughs> starting at the Animators Palette tier, we've got uh, Steve Elsis, Robert Taylor, Robbie and Jillian Abney, Heather Wilson, the folks over at the Dillo's Diz, Derek Sassman, Dave Hall, uh, Christine Christensen, Chris Brown, Chad Swindell, Bridget Casey, and then we move up, to, or sorry, Beth Gentry, Ashley Norton, Ashley Darling, uh, and then we move up to the Palo Brunch tier where we've got Thomas Rogers, Sonia Allen, Emily Fay, Abbott, Edward Lynn, Drew Curry, Dennis Keithley, Cindy Leichner, Chris Wynn, Adrian and Emily Van Zuli. We move up then to the Palo Dinner <laughs> tier with Vicky Sue, <laughs> Jennifer tiers, Swart, guys. <laughs> Josh Wilson, Christopher Vorabek, Chris Braga, Ann Witten. And then we move up to our Remy Brunch tier where we have Sean Burns, Doug Young. And then uh, at our highest level of support, our Remy Dinner tier, we have CT Suite. So thank you so much. You recall CT was uh, was the tinfoil ears from last week. And uh, yes. for all of you out there, he has started a social media account He's called watching. Tinfoil Mickey Ears. T no, yes, Tinfoil so. Mouse Ears. He's got, if you want to pull up his comment, ears. Brian, he says, hey, Brian and Sam, excited to see what the dynamic DCL duo has for us tonight. Night. I also love Dennis's comment here. It's another multiverse episode between the DCL duo and <laughs> Disney Deciphered. I love it. Love it. We love we, all the multiverses yeah. for podcasting. We love our fellow creators in this space. But yeah, let's we have we have to let Leslie say hi, but welcome to the show. Or welcome back to the show, Leslie. Welcome to your first live show on our show. Yes, thank you so much for having me. I always love talking to the two of you. I mean, I have to say it, you two are some of the nicest in the podcast creator space there can be. So um, I love I love the synergy that we we keep crossing paths. We met <laughs> we met in person for the first time at Al Lani That's during right. the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. And then we kind of keep right. crossing paths, which is great. We love it. Yes. Well, we're so happy to have you on the show. Uh, for all of those uh, watching live, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Uh, as Josh McHenry says, it's happening. Some people have Monday Night Football. We get the duo live show. I love that. That's awesome. I watch know out. Dennis. Watch out, NBC. Watch out, yeah. NBC. <laughs> watch out. And <laughs> ESPN. Whoever has the football ESPN. Concept. I don't ESPN. know who has it. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Dennis. Yeah. And hi, Bridget Ann. And hi, DCL Dan joining us. Uh, JD and uh, Ashley, thanks for joining. And oh, Ashley says, always funny to hear your name as you join a live YouTube, like taking roll call. Yeah. And Daniel <laughs> Lee is watching as well. Oh, Dennis Keithley says, Joe Buck and Troy Aikman have nothing on us. So thank you, Dennis. Yeah, yeah. It's a, I know who Troy Aikman is, but is it bad if I tell you I don't know who Joe Buck is? <laughs> I guess he's a football Great. player, though. <laughs> All right. Well, let Let's talk Disney Cruise Line, which is yeah. our specialty here. Uh, we brought Leslie on because we want to talk about sailing with kids, tips and tricks for sailing with kids. Uh, we thought we'd just kind of move through the whole Disney Cruise Line process here and talk about some of the things you might want to consider if you're sailing with, uh, with kids of kind of varying ages. But let's start with uh, Leslie. Folks who want to, you know, sail with their kids, how should they think about picking maybe their first Disney cruise? You know, ship, itinerary. What are some of your thoughts and tips for picking your first Disney cruise with kids? 
So, I mean, a lot depends on the ages of your kids. And um, I first have to say, you guys have far more experience sailing Disney Cruise Line with kids than I do, <laughs> just the sheer number of cruises. But I do have a teenager now, so I have yeah. that experience that you guys haven't, we haven't don't had have. yet. Yeah. But you're, you're, about, you're trying to prepare for it now. So... <laughs> So I think a bracing. Lot we're on, bracing ourselves. <laughs> that's right. So a lot depends on sort of the ages of your kids. And I think that should drive, you know, if you've got much younger kids, you have to think of just like the logistics of travel being yes. hard. If you've got a toddler or a preschooler, you don't want to be taking a cross country flight and the kid being tired and then taking like a three day cruise where they're barely going to get to settle in. And it's just going to feel like this race. Right. Mm -hmm. So you have to think about what your kids can handle just more generally in terms of travel. That's sort of how I, yeah. how I think about it. And I say that because the first Disney cruise I ever did, I had a three-year-old and we did a three night cruise out of Port Canaveral. Was it hard? Yes, <laughs> it was very hard, <laughs> but you know, it was a media cruise. So that was the reason I picked it. But, but yeah. we said after that cruise, no more three nights for us. Um, at least not with younger kids. We like the longer cruises. It allows the kids to acclimate. And, mm -hmm. and like you guys, I'm based on the West Coast. So there are not a lot of cruise options out, out of the West Coast on Disney. Like if I, most of my options are yeah. out of Florida right. or overseas. So, I mean, I have taken a San Diego uh, cruise. And so that was pretty easy. But if, if you're traveling of any distance, that's, that's something you really have to think about. Yeah, and adjusting to the time yeah. difference, I think, is is an, is an important part of that as well. I think, though, all things considered, do you have a ship? Like, let's say, let's say you live in Florida or you live nearby to the port, and so a shorter trip is maybe not a big deal. Do you have any thoughts as to, like, what ship you would recommend for someone with, like, really young kids versus what ship or ships you might recommend for somebody who has teenagers? To me, it's more about the itinerary than the ships, and you guys yeah. may, may disagree. It's more about what ports are the best fit for your kids, mm -hmm. because all of the Disney ships are fantastic, and I haven't even been on all of them. So, and you know, for me, I'm never really looking. I I, I want to pick a ship I haven't done yet. I think, yeah. So maybe maybe that's what you're being driven by is yeah. the ship that you haven't done. But you know, I, I think it's more about the itinerary, and you know all of the ships are going to be a great fit for every age because they all have similar kid amenities. They have the kids club, they have the teens, teen and twin clubs, they have the entertainment, they have the dining. You're not going to be missing out on anything major True. for the kids at least. Yeah. In terms of the ships but i bet you guys have your favorites right well i would say nathan has his favorites so like so mm. for kids club he would tell you that the wish has the best kids club and so the treasure is all is going to have an equal kids club to the wish right so he would say that's the best kids club but he also really likes the wonder and the magic because they have a slide in their kids club right whereas the fantasy and the dream don't um I think the the nursery on all all of the ships is very comparable for for young kids, but the wish has the biggest one and has sort of the more space you know more space, um, and has access to that Captain Mickey and Minnie room. So I think that's a, a nice bonus. But I will say the teenagers have it the best on the dream and the fantasy. Mm -hmm. Not that the club, uh, not that the activities are any private different. private pool. The but they pool. have, they have, yeah, they have area. this really cool, yeah, they have this really cool area that it's basically what the wish has that is now the the rainforest room. It's this like outdoor area with hot tubs in it. So they have this cool, like exclusive sun deck. Will that make should... or break your cruise though? Probably not. I think, you know, they're, it more. it's more about like the activities and the friends that you make than necessarily just, just having access to a cool sun deck. We should pause too and say when we talk about sailing with kids, Sam, can you remind folks or Leslie, do you recall what the what the youngest age you can be to sail on Disney Cruise Line is? It is six months old. That's the youngest, yeah. but certain sailings actually have a one year minimum, which I believe like Panama Canal, a couple of the yeah. longer cruises longer have ones. a yeah, a couple yeah. of the longer ones have like a one year age limit, but I believe most of the cruises it's like the standard is is six months. It, yeah. And the the other thing I was going to say about kids clubs on board, one thing to keep in mind, we so for a long time we loved the Wish Kids Club because Nathan loved it, uh, but 
uh, if you're thinking, oh, I'm gonna try the treasure, I bet it has a great, you know, it's a great, it's the exact same kiss it's club. Same. It's rinse and yeah. repeat. They are not changing anything as far as and, we know. So, and they're really so if not you've been on the wish from... and you're thinking, I'll get my kid, I'll get my kid a yeah. new experience on the treasure, it won't be. So, yeah. and, and really, the same can be said for like the dream and the fantasy. There are some differences, and same with the wonder and the magic. There are some differences between the the two, but in general, if you're talking same class very 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 similar if not identical you know kids clubs yeah. yeah yeah i love this comment from uh from ashley let's let's say we've we've let's actually let's do one more step and then i'm gonna put ashley uh, ashley's comment up so we've picked our sailing stateroom uh my impression is look pick the one that's going to fit your family the best like if you're a family <laughs> of three almost any stateroom on board is probably going to be able to handle you and so it comes down to cost and preference around you know verandas and not if you're a family of four i think it gets a little trickier for some um Meh, if you're a family most, of five, almost all the staterooms it's more five yeah. five if, and more if you're family of five now you're getting into family deluxe veranda is probably the only stateroom on board and not even all of them if i'm remembering correctly will accommodate a family of five and then when you get into some of the people we've had on our show who are, you know, bringing four children in tow, you're now automatically into double state. You have achievement unlocked. It's double stateroom time. <laughs> and then your question is, am I getting adjoining staterooms? Uh, are my kids old enough and responsible enough that uh, I might be able to get away with like teenagers across the hall in an inside cabin? P.S. You still have to have an adult assigned to that cabin. Uh, so, you know, I don't think Disney really wants you doing that trick, but you could. You could have adjoining rooms, though, and put all the kids in one room and the adults in the other. Um, at some point, too, if you're booking two cabins, depending on the sailing, it can get pretty cost effective to start looking at concierge in like a one bedroom or a two bedroom situation on like the especially the magic and the wonder. So I don't know, tips and tricks around choosing your stateroom after that landscape discussion there. I don't know, Sam, Leslie, what do you think? Well, I mean, I'm a family of four, so we have it pretty easy. I mean, you guys have it even easier, a family of three, because they all work. But but I haven't had any problems fitting our family of four. Even now with a teenager and an older kid, mm -hmm. we fit just fine. And, you know, it does, especially having that split bathroom with the teenage girl, that's that's super helpful in oh, terms of getting ready. Yeah. Very, very helpful. So, and we've done other other cruise lines. We just did a celebrity cruise, as you guys know, um, last year. And that was a little bit tighter for getting ready, getting ready um, than Disney. So, so I think really most of the cabins do work for families of four. I also like to think about location of the cabin in, in the ship. Yes. And we usually like to do um, just ocean view. We don't need the veranda sure. because we're never in the cabin. With ki older kids, we're never in the cabin. Now with younger kids, we had a, had a veranda and that was helpful, you know, just to have that extra space and, you know, one's going to bed early. But we actually like ocean view just to save a little bit of money. But mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. like being very low on the ship because mm -hmm. older kids, we like to be able to dash everywhere, climb the stairs, not wait for the elevators, be masters of our own destiny. So getting somewhere like deck six, something like that, that works out um, really well for us. So think about location. And we, again, don't want to be too far, far forward, too far back. Um, I try to get a couple of staterooms off of the like elevator lobby stairwell. So, so I'm not, you don't get the noise, but yeah. you get the access. Yeah. We've got some great comments from Bridget Ann about um, how you see, we see a lot of people posting on Facebook about verandas and whether or not they're safe for kids, young kids. I think it, the answer is it depends, right? They do have a lock that's up kind of high. So they're not like a kid can't just, you know, turn the handle and open the door. The doors are quite heavy. They're sliding doors, but they're quite heavy. And well, again, sometimes they those have handles a, take, take a lot of work too. To get yes, them. Like we've had yes. handles where it's like, <laughs> where it's trying like to pry the thing open. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. they but also, like lock. I said, the, the child it's safety lock, yeah. exactly, that's up high. Now, that doesn't mean that your kid can't access it by climbing on some piece of furniture and open it. It is possible, but it does take some amount of strength, and it would probably take, you know, quite a bit of effort that you would notice, right? It's not like, so unless you have a kid who's really mischievous and strong, and um, then I, well, I yeah, wouldn't with, worry like, too it's like much. A, it's like a lot of the, the a lot of the discussion tonight is going to be we're just talking about your average prototypical you know your children yeah. better than we ever will so like yes if, if your, your kid, kid prefers is a big to sleep climber in, yeah well if your kid prefers to sleep in absolute darkness and you're a family of three then an inside cabin may be kind of the way to go right mm -hmm. uh if if your kid is a climber and you do you think they might be able to climb up and get the balcony unlocked then 
you know, Ocean View State Room maybe for you. So yeah, no, always sort of in these conversations, know thyself, know thy kids. Um, I also wanted to put up um, Ashley's comment here because it starts to gets us into some of the amenities, Ooh. so to speak, that they offer on board for for kids. So she's saying, make sure that the diaper pail is in your room as soon as possible. They ran out once on the dream when we had kids in diapers. So that highlights for me is Disney will provide a diaper genie uh, in your room for kids. Disney will also provide a pack and play in the room for kids, but as supplies last, I suppose. Is the right, you need here. to request. Um, you should yeah. be requesting those actually before you board, and if they're not in your stateroom, as soon as you get into your stateroom, you need to let your stateroom attendant know ASAP and get that put into your yeah. room. Yeah. And I love Dennis's comment. It's a game changer when your kids can be in their own stateroom, even if it's a connecting stateroom. Yeah, <laughs> I, I yes, I, I would guess that is absolutely the case. Dennis. So yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So uh, one other thing before we even get on board the ship that I think we should talk about is preparing your kids to sail. Um, we actually were cleaning out a uh, like our TV cabinet the other day, and we found we had bought these DVDs that were like it was like a five DVD box set. It wasn't from Disney bought; that they were the... promotional DVDs. Oh, were they sent to us for free? I forgot. Yeah, they were, that. Yeah, yeah, and it was... they're promotional DVDs yeah. and like about the Disney parks. There was one CD that w or DVD that was cruise, and then the rest were parks ones, right? Um, and so, yeah, we had watched those with Nathan, I guess, years and years ago. I couldn't believe it when we found those. But now you don't have to do that because now there's YouTube, <laughs> um, and yeah. there's a million no, but different it goes, but it goes to, bloggers. It goes to yeah. do you show do you show your do you show your kids videos to prep them? You know that sort of thing. So yeah, I don't know, Leslie. Did, did what do you think about prepping kids in that way? Like our son needed it, but I don't know if every kid needs it. Some kids may want to be surprised. I, I don't know. Yeah, I think that's fair. I mean, I think it depends, again, on the age of your kids. If you have younger kids for anything Disney, I think prepping them is helpful. I mean, we do that for, you know, dark rides or, or mm -hmm. scary rides for my, my younger one. He's sometimes tends to be a little bit on the sensitive side. So we, we definitely did watch some videos and things like that before our first cruise. Um, now, I think sometimes we're just watching them so that they know the layout and can hit the ground running. Like with my teenager, she yeah. wants to know what the, the teen club looks like immediately. And so she knows, you know, what, what video game is going to be there, what the layout <laughs> is for like hangout and that kind of thing. So, so that's sort of the purpose of that. But I do think if you have kids who have any sort of anxiety or just, or just slow to warm up um, to new places and new spaces that it's worth showing them. And we do that for a lot of different aspects of, you know, Disney cruise and other Disney vacations and that that does that does tend to help our, our younger one as well but now you know once they go on one one right. ship they're they're hooked and then <laughs> <laughs> it's really it's really more about like how big is you know what are the flavors on the ice cream machine right <laughs> i think a great yeah. thing to do for like really little kids is show them the videos with the characters so mm -hmm. uh, we have all seen those poor toddlers who are afraid of the characters. There are many who are very happy. They see Mickey or Minnie and they run up and they give him a hug and they don't want to let go. But there are a handful you see that are just terrified. And I wonder uh, whether those parents ever showed them a video of the characters ahead of time because I think if you got them used to what Mickey looks like in real life instead <laughs> not, of on Not if Mickey they didn't want to give them Clubhouse. nightmares before bedtime they didn't see them. Not if they didn't want to give them nightmares <laughs> well, before. Now, I'm not like, saying like the I'm not saying imitation Mickey, I'm saying a real <laughs> Mickey. Um but I you know, there's you can definitely warm your kids up to that and, and I think yeah, some people are like, Oh, I don't want to ruin the surprise, but I, I think your point, Leslie, of kids with any kind of anxiety in particular they're going to do a lot better if they have an understanding of what they're getting themselves into. And the so other thing I would, of the, okay, go ahead. The no, other go thing ahead, I should mention, mention really quickly, it, because the first cruise we went on, my son was just barely three. Yeah. And so he was at that age where he was technically old enough to go to the kids club. He still could go to the nursery as a backup. And he had been going to preschool at that point, but not for, you know, very extended periods of time. Mm -hmm. So if you want to drop, a younger kid, you have got to get them prepared for that separation. Yes. And, you know, if they go to preschool, they go to daycare, something like that, they're going to have a much easier time. But if this is the first time you've ever just plopped them off with like a group setting, they may not last. And in fact, my son, even with his experience, he thought the kids club at age three was a little bit overwhelming, the Oceaneer Lab and the Oceaneer Club. And it got a little crazy. And so he, we did take him out and put him in the nursery for a little bit. And that 
was like the good reset that he needed to be around to be the big kid around <laughs> the the younger kids and then he was able to sort of go back and forth but that's something to keep in mind because a lot of people are like hey free child care but if you haven't used child care for three or four years <laughs> then the kids may not be ready that's a great point we actually talked with somebody the other day in a show that's not going to be out yet but they mentioned that their kid goes to daycare, but their kid knows those teachers. And so they, their kid is very comfortable going to that environment. And they noticed, though, because they started taking their kid to, like, the gym daycare, where they don't know and has got a lot more turnover of different caregivers, that they felt like the drop off at the kids club on a cruise was a lot easier because their kids had that kind of experience where... It was a, a less known place than their regular babysitter or their regular daycare provider. So I think that that's a good tip um, for those with really young so, kids in particular. Yeah. So w- one thing I want to start, I want to move us forward here a little bit. Um, uh, there's a couple more good comments here on the stateroom, though, side of things I just wanted to put up. Uh, Daniel saying, surprisingly, we have found that on most cruises, booking two staterooms with two and three people is only slightly more cost than a single deluxe family ocean view stateroom. Mm. We now usually try to book just two rooms. I think it's a good point the, to really look for the cost of that uh, in there. And then uh, Daniel was also mentioning that they were looking at doing a Royal Caribbean cruise uh, to try it out for the five of them, but Royal wouldn't let them book for five people through their website. So yep. <laughs> at least Disney's got the, look at that, Disney technology beating another <laughs> Disney cruise Disney IT, That's holy cow, yeah. they just got there a compliment. <laughs> yeah. Um, the uh, the other thing I wanted to point out uh, pre-cruise is uh, the check-in process. So if you're sailing with kids, when you check in, you will have more steps to the process than those without kids. And so there are ways to get around some of this and get right to your port arrival time, you know, choosing that. But you will have to go back and fill out paperwork. That's where you can register them for the kids club. If your kid has any sort of like medical conditions that they need to know about on board, that's where you need to note it for them. Uh, I suspect you can, uh, I don't think you do it through the online process about requesting diaper genies and such, although we didn't sail with Nathan when he was young enough to to need yeah. one of those. Uh, I think you have to call into the cruise line to get that taken care of. But you will have a little bit more paperwork. And just an asterisk, if you happen to be sailing, you know, if your grandparents out there watching playing to sail with the grandkids, even more paperwork because you'll need some some authorizations and some letters and some other things to ha- for Disney to have on file for you to travel with them outside the U.S. and take them off the ship in the ports. Uh, even if you are traveling as parents with a kid, if aunt and uncle want to take your kids off the ship, more work to do in the check-in process to make sure that they're authorized to do that stuff. So just be prepared. It's a little bit more of a process when you're sailing with kids with the, uh, the paperwork. I yeah. also wanted to put this comment from Tracy. Another good pre-cruise tip. Uh, as soon as you book your cruise, find the Facebook page and you can leverage. We talked about this in the show we did with uh, about the Facebook groups. You can use the Facebook groups to uh, to meet other kids, you know, or find other kids and parents sailing who are similar in age and kind of meet up and make some friends in advance. So that is a that is definitely a great tip. I uh, love all right. Beth's tip, to- Brian, though. Actually, wait, before we get on board, oh. Beth has a great tip of the character call. So you can get a character call. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. You actually, you took up the wrong comment, the one before that, Brian. It's Beth's comment about, yeah, the character call is a fun thing to set up for the little ones. They had a lot of separation anxiety when they did their first cruise when her daughter was four. So what you do is you get a call from like Mickey and Minnie being excited about their, about the cruise. And it's not just for kids. Uh, yes, t- this CT's is tinfoil saying mouse he gets one ears. For his <laughs> yeah, this is CT. <laughs> He's tinfoil mouse ears for those who remember him from our prognostication show the other night. Yeah, and then uh, and, special and requests. Craig is saying online now. Yeah, Craig is saying they do have. Yeah, they do have special requests online that you can ha- you can uh, you can fill out. So, all right, let's get on board. Let's get on board. Let's talk about the big elephant in the room. We've been talking around it. Kids clubs on board. Sam, I feel like you know you have this stuff memorized in terms of the age ranges. So I'm going to maybe <laughs> sure. look for you. There's sure. there's four Zero to four three. levels of kids club. Yeah, there's yeah. Four levels of so, there's the nursery, nursery. Yeah, so so it's Zero a small three. world. It's a small world nursery. Zero to three, that includes three year olds. So anyone who's younger than four. Then you've got Oceaneer Club, Oceaneer Lab. That's the kids club, as we all refer to it. That is inclusive age three 
through age 10. So anyone who's age three, anyone who's age 10. So that means three-year-olds can go to either, as Leslie mentioned. The only difference is three-year-olds that go to the kids' club must be potty trained. That's the difference. Whereas you don't have to be potty trained to go to the nursery. But a potty trained three-year-old can also go to the nursery. Potty train means no assistance. The counselors will not help them yes. with the restrooms. No wiping. So they have no to be wiping. Able to do it all on their own. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. After so after the kids club. After the kids club, you've got edge. Or the way I always remember. Club. Yep. Yeah. So I, the way I remember this is you're on the edge of being a teenager. You're not. A, you're a preteen, right? So that is ages 11 through 14. Again, inclusive. All 11 year olds through all 14 year olds, and then you've got vibe 14 through 17 again inclusive so that means 14 year olds can go either to edge or to vibe and then once you're 18 you can't go to any of the kids clubs except if they're in open house mode which is you can look at them but you cannot go into a kids club if you are 18 or older with 18 to 20 year olds they have a special 18 to 20 society, which is basically just like a meetup group that they'll have activities for, but they don't have their own space. They don't have their own club. And we should say for check in, check out. And we should say these age ranges are new uh, ish. The zero to three has always been that way, but it used to be three to 12 could go to the Oceaneers club and lab. And then the edge kind of picked up 11. to 14, yeah, there was a, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you could choose to go to the lab or edge mm-hmm. at 11, and then uh, the vibe kind of stayed the same. Uh, Disney has now made it so that you age out at 10, which was uh, a bit of a shock in the system for many. Actually, uh, age out at 11. Also, age out at 11, sorry, age out at 11. Uh, <laughs> and the other thing they've done is they've started putting wristbands on the kids who are, I think, three to five is the age group, and they kind of circulate them through the club as a group they're not like free play any longer and so they're, they're like providing in camp. Kind of organized activities yeah for that for that age group everyone else is kind of free pro, free play around them um i am not going to force us into a discussion of the ins and outs of the wisdom <laughs> of disney's decision to change the ages of the kids club we are where we are uh i appreciate craig did ask with a 10-year-old aging out, I wonder if that will change their favorite ship based on the club. Uh, possibly. I mean, I, I feel like the older the kids get, the more they just kind of want to do their own thing anyway. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, maybe maybe it will change the, the favorite ship. Um, I did want to put this question up, though. So, Cross Mouse Adventures is asking, thoughts about how long kids should stay in the nursery? I think before we answer that question, though, Sam, you have to make reservations for the nursery. Is that right? Yes Actually, ahead, and Leslie. no. You're not. Uh, yeah. Leslie nodded her head. First. <laughs> Leslie, no, Leslie <laughs> knows. Ahead. Leslie knows this better than I, because we actually never had to book the nursery. That's true. Um, That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my, my information is still is a little bit dated because uh, my youngest is ten now. But when we used it, yes, you have to make reservations. But often they do have like walk up availability, and mm-hmm. that was how how we tended to use it because. My son, I was on, on a media cruise actually at the time, so I had meetings to attend. So <laughs> I needed my son to stay for longer periods of time. So if he got sick of the kids club, then um, I moved him to the nursery and uh, usually they were able to find space. And so yeah. it may just depend on sort of how kid heavy your cruise is. And one thing I've noticed, and I don't know if you guys have noticed as well, there seem to be a lot more young families now than there was pre-COVID. Yeah. Um, a lot more families are cruising earlier with kids. Mm-hmm. It used to be like, I felt like when my kid was, was three and we took our first Disney cruise, we were cruising early. And now I think a lot more families are cruising with little ones. So that does probably change the capacity calculation. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. Um, you know, I think the answer to that question is however long you think Remy dinner will last you. <laughs> um, but honestly, it really it really depends on your kid. In the nursery, they will feed your children, um, but you you tell them what they can feed your kid, or you even or you bring their formula if they're still in formula or breast milk or whatever with them. But they will actually feed your kid in the nursery. This is the only kids club where there is food served, and that's a, a, the nursery. So Ocean uh, well, Years I was Lab, say, Ocean if you, Years if you club. Haven't sailed- I was, was going to say, if you sailed haven't sailed since yeah. the post-pandemic, a few things have gone away. 
Uh, one of those things being they do not offer dinner service in the kids club any longer. They used to offer that. Um, they also do not come to the main dinner seating to pick kids up and take them to the clubs. Uh, yeah. So they, they have to be dropped off by a parent or um, we should say one of the things you can select in the check-in process is whether or not your child can have, we call it check-in, check-out privileges, although we've been told by the counselors at the club, like any kid can come check themselves in anytime they want. It's whether they can, they can take themselves out of the club on their own. Um, so you can give your kid that ability if they're sort of old enough, and mature enough to just check themselves out. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but you're going to need to check them in. A lot of this just comes down to can they find the kids club on their own? Do they know how to get back to your stateroom without your help? Um, that was actually a big thing when they changed the age ranges. There were kids going into EDGE who really had had no experience checking themselves in or out of a club. And EDGE has no, EDGE and VIBE have no check in, check out process you wander in you wander out uh, you're on your own and so there were some kids who we, we heard stories about kids who couldn't find their way back to their own state rooms you know all that sort of stuff there there is more structured programming in the oceaneers lab and club than anything you will find in edge and vibe they do some like scavenger hunts and i think councils organize some like ice game breakers, playing tournaments yeah. and things like icebreakers and stuff but those two clubs are really meant i think for kids to find each other find their tribe hang out, play together, move about the ship together. It's not it's not super organized activities like you find in the Oceaneers Club and Lab. Leslie, is that is that your impression as well? Yeah, that's definitely. I mean, they do have a schedule and so the kids can say, you know, I want to meet up here cuz we're doing some sort of a, you know, game like board game tournament or something like that or a scavenger hunt. So they do have that in the older kids, the tween and teen clubs, but oftentimes this was a place where my teenager would meet up with friends and then they would go elsewhere on the ship to you know do whatever hopefully not mischievous thing that they were doing and usually it was just eating way too much ice cream and, and feeling bad afterwards so if that's all the mischief they, yeah if that's all the mischief they get up to you know bless them i love yeah, it I love exactly it. It's I'll, very, it's very old fashioned family fun, right? <laughs> That's right. I, I'll ne I'll never forget the moment that I, so I offered Nathan some charging privileges on his stateroom account in case he wanted to buy ice cream in the, you know, the sweet shops that they have on yeah. the dream, the fantasy, the wish. And he was like, no, I'm good. They got free soft serve. And I was like, how responsible of <laughs> you? I appreciate that. Um, He's thrifty. He's thrifty. <laughs> <laughs> he is a thrifty kid. D Daniel has a good tip. If you have an older kid, they can be registered to check in and out younger siblings. So that is a good, uh, that is a really good tip uh, to get that done. So anything else about the kids clubs that we haven't talked about that folks should, should know when traveling with kids? I would say for edge and vibe in particular, if your kids are of those ages and they're interested at all in checking them out, make sure they go to like the first couple of sessions because that's when the counselors do engage the kids in some more get to know you games, some icebreaker games. And we've heard anecdotally, because our son obviously hasn't been old enough to go there yet, um, that that's really when a lot of those early friendships are formed. And so if your kid ends up going to edge or vibe, not until you know day three of the cruise or even day two of the cruise like those clicks might already be formed and it may be harder for them to make friends and so if, if they're interested in making friends and not just hanging out with you parents the whole time which some kids are <laughs> no judgment there if they love hanging out with their parents that's awesome just means you can't go to paulo um, <laughs> but you know that I would say it's important to prioritize getting them to the clubs that first day and for those first get to know you activities. Yeah, I totally yep. agree. We were all over that on the last cruise that we took my teenager on. And there are a couple of things I guess I should add, especially with the older kids. Um, one thing that we found out is when we cruised most recently, my daughter turned 14 on the cruise. So she boarded at 13 and got off at 14. And we, we learned that actually at Vibe, you can sign a waiver to allow 13 year olds to go into Vibe. And this isn't just if their birthday happens to be on the cruise. This is all 13 year olds. It does depend on capacity. And I think the same is true for 10 year olds and Edge that you could potentially get them in there as well if you sign a waiver and they approve. So if you've got like, you know, kids, siblings or cousins or friends who span those age ranges, there is a little a bit of additional flexibility. So that was really important. We wanted to give her that waiver when mm -hmm. she was 13 so she could make the friends and 
that was important because obviously that was going to be her, her crowd for the entire cruise. And, and, but I, I will say like, because of these waivers, everybody tends to be aging up, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? So mm -hmm. really like there aren't 14 year olds in edge. Mm -hmm. The 14-year-olds are in vibe. <laughs> yeah. As a result, I think sometimes like the 17-year-olds almost are too old for, yeah. for, for vibe. <laughs> so that's something yeah. that you kind of have to keep in mind. Like it feels 11, like 11 and 12, and we haven't sailed since they've changed the age range, but, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't affect the tween and teen clubs as much. The 11 and 12 and younger 13-year-olds, like think junior high is edge, and then high school is vibe. Yeah, for sure. I, I and will say I will this, say you, you can't age down. So that's the yeah. one thing Disney lets you age up if you're within that time frame. And as Leslie said, based on capacity, so they can say no, um, but that you cannot age them down. Yeah. Yes, I was going to say, if you're 13 or 14, 14 years old out there and you happen to be catching this podcast, you should immediately go find your parents and get them to book you onto the Dream or the Fantasy because it has... <laughs> It has a kids club I want them to make for adults. I like know, the vibe it's so on nice. those two ships is amazing. <laughs> it's so it's amazing. Nice. So yeah. I'm so sad I didn't get to experience it. Um, I wanted to throw this comment up from Beth really fast, who just said her daughter wasn't that into the edge, but luckily found two friends mm -hmm. through the text group uh, they set up through Facebook. I just I did want to highlight like we've we've had sailings with other families where you know they do age up a little bit and they just like the kid just isn't loving it. They're not digging it. Uh, it feels maybe like they're you know just not ready for that kind of a crowd. That's something to be aware of. The other thing this comment sparked for me was communication on board. Uh, so on Royal, I've learned you can't use their app if you're under a certain age to communicate and text back and forth. But on Disney, really? you can give your kids you can give your kids permission to use the app and message. Uh, and that is a great thing if they happen to have their own device or if you have an old phone lying around and you can put the Disney Cruise Line app on it, it is a great way to stay in touch. Just install the app, give them permission, and then they can chat back and forth. You can figure but out you don't, where they are, you don't where they're set headed. up a yeah, you don't set up an account in advance for the kids, by the way. You just you download the app onto their device ahead of time. And then once you board, you're actually setting up an account because it's just linked to that particular cruise. They don't need like a My Disney Experience account or anything like that for it. Yeah, yeah and we, and we use that like to... app. It, sorry, Go ahead. Go ahead, Ryan. We, we use that app quite a bit with my son. The last cruise we were on, he was nine, I think. And... So one thing I loved, we did give him checkout privileges. So mm -hmm. he would check himself out and then it would send a push notification to my app that he had checked himself out and he knew how to get back to the room. I love that. And then he had a device in the room that he could then further communicate with us. Like I'm doing fine, mom, like don't come back and leave what you're doing or whatever. That was, that was really, really nice. And we did sales celebrity, same company that owns Royal. And we did not have that with him. And it was um, much more frustrating. So I did mm -hmm. find the logistics of like just giving that little bit of independence yeah. at these pivotal ages. Like Disney has helped train, and and the next cruise we take, uh, my son will be eleven. So we will be aging up to uh, edge at that point, and we'll see we'll see if he's ready. <laughs> he will yeah. just be eleven, that, you, just yeah. to turn eleven. That's a good discussion. I, first of all, Leslie, I wanted to give you so one of our listeners out there giving you a shout out that they loved your article uh, covering Disney versus celebrity. That's coming from CT. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, it, it's a good point. I want to pause here and ask the question. I think Disney, one of the plus, we, we always talk about Disney has pluses for kids with the kids clubs and a whole bunch of other stuff. But I think one of the pluses for Disney too is that level of independence you can give a kid on board and feel relatively safe that, that they're going to be okay. You know, to your point, to your discussion point there in just a second, I'm not sure how comfortable I am giving that level of independence to Nathan on like a big Royal Caribbean ship. It's a different, you know, it's a different experience. Um, I don't want to say it's a different crowd. It may not be. It's a lot of crossover between Disney cruisers and Royal Caribbean cruisers, but it's a much bigger ship. And while geared toward families, I think Disney thought about sort of families first. And I'm not always sure Royal was thinking that direction. So like, Maybe they don't, I, I don't know. Maybe they don't have the, you know, some of the safety protocols that Disney would have. So like, I don't, do you have any thoughts there, Leslie, on like the level of independence you might give your kid on a Disney cruise versus other cruise lines? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I am glad that this past year we did Disney first and then we did Celebrity because Disney really helped my son feel confident in that independence. And, you know, we've been to so many other places like the theme parks and Aulani, and we try to sort of give that little bit, like the last time we were at Aulani, 
we let him gave him a key card like get yourself back to the to the room on your own um from the pool so so disney's been really great for that because like you say there are so many safeguards he knows that if he does get himself into trouble or he gets turned around or confused he knows where to ask for help and that he will get well taken care of and i feel confident in that so so disney is disney is a parenting helper <laughs> <laughs> because th this, true, is, this is harder this is harder with some kids than others i mean yeah. definitely it was not a it was not a big deal with my older my younger has needed more training and more hand holding for all of these kind of things and you know i think it's been great to to for him to see that he can do these things and then do them in real life yeah, he's mm -hmm walking home from school across busy streets these days. So it's Wow. We haven't done that wow. one yet. We haven't <laughs> taken that leap yet. Leslie, now did did going on the Disney cruise and getting that level of independence, did it help him then was he able to sort of translate that independence over to celebrity? Because to your point, he didn't have access to the app to message you. So you had to if you were gonna give him that level of independence, there needed to be a little bit more trust or a little bit more assurance that it all was going to be well, right? What, yes. Did that work? Yeah, it did work. And so we he actually was not allowed to check himself out of the, the kids club at Celebrity. Oh, interesting. I think you have to be 10. And he mm. was he was a month shy of his, yeah. of his 10th birthday, of course, <laughs> which was annoying. But, um, you know, his sister could check him out or things like that. So she did right. do that. And but we did, you know, let him roam the ship and we did go on a, a smaller celebrity ship. It was an Alaska cruise. So it was more like the size of mm -hmm. the magic or the wonder or something like that. And but he but he he could go back to the room. We could trust him and say, like, look, we're not going to be back to the room for an hour. So if you, you know, head back yourself, you won't be able to get in touch with us. And it worked. It worked. We managed to get through without that communication during the course of that week. And um, I think it was because we had had that dry run with Disney first. Yeah. For Please. those who uh, who have issues with the app or don't um, don't want to download the app, if your kid has an, an Apple device, you can also iMessage or use, you can actually also use WhatsApp on the Disney, on Disney ships Wi-Fi without paying for Wi-Fi. So those are the two ways you can still communicate with a child that has a device. Understanding little kids, you're not giving them their own device yeah. to carry around with themselves. Uh, we gave Nathan uh, an iPhone relatively early, I would say. I mean, he was, he was nine or was he, he had just turned nine i think when we gave him his phone yeah so that was young we and didn't it was anticipate it was primarily it was primarily so he could have some independence yeah. on the ship um yeah. because he was doing really well with he'd check himself out he'd go back to the stateroom he might go get himself something to eat right he was he yep. demonstrated a level of responsibility we felt like we wanted to give him independence but we needed a way to keep tabs on him so for sure. uh, i think for most people getting them getting them a phone is probably a bridge too far it was probably a bridge too far for us uh, at that age, uh, but if you've got an old iPhone lying around that you can just activate the Wi-Fi on it, it works. It'll work great. It'll work great. So um, yeah. I want to move us on to another big, uh, a big topic, which is pools, uh, really fast, because I think this is an area where Disney has, you know, a few rules and restrictions around the water slides and the pools and stuff on board and the uh, different offerings that they have. So Leslie, what what kind of pools uh, have you experienced on the Disney cruise ship and you know splash pads and all that kind of fun stuff? So not too much, because like I say, you know, three days. You had Alaska. With a, with a with, well, no, we didn't have Alaska. <laughs> oh, that oh no, celebrity. that was celebrity. Well, celebrity. Yeah, I was like, it's but, too cold. <laughs> <laughs> but we had San Diego during spring break, which yeah. is pretty chilly until chilly. you get down to Cabo. And that's yeah. really the only day that you're warm enough to swim. But sure. um, but the big thing to think about, kids who are not potty trained can't go into the pools and the hot tubs. So not even with swim yeah. diapers. So they do have, of course, like the splash pads on the different ships. So there is something for the little kids to do to get wet. And I have to say, like, my son wouldn't have even been interested in the bigger pool at age three. Like, it's mm -hmm. a little bit, you know, it just can get kind of loud and chaotic and lots of lots of bodies yeah. in small spaces. So the splash pads are good enough usually for the little ones. And yep. a lot of cruise lines don't have that. So, you know, that, that, that I think where Disney really does shine for even those families of, you know, toddlers and, and babies. So that's something to keep in mind. But we, you know, 
the the water slides that's that's kind of the big thing for yeah. the older kids even even when it's frigid my husband and my son on our last <laughs> san diego sailing <laughs> did get out there and i took videos i did not get out there myself <laughs> it was too cold it was too absolutely cold. yeah but th that's a good point about the diapers and i and i want to say this is not just children in diapers so if you have an adult in your family who is also not potty trained um, they are, will not be allowed to use any of the pool facilities. So we're talking like even the uh, there's a large splash aqua zone. It's I forget what it's called. The aqua lab that's on several of the ships that is not it's not the little kid splash pad, but it's more like a big kid splash pad. And that also you, you need to be fully potty trained for. So it's really the only area, the only water play area that you can be in diapers for and you have to be under a certain age is those little kid splash pads. And one of the ships, I think it's up to age four. And then on, or on some of the ships, I think it's only up to age four or five. And on one of the other ships, it's up to age like six or something because they're obviously bigger areas. But yeah, there aren't... Um, there aren't a ton of options for the non potty trained crew. So I just like to tell people, and same goes for water slides. They have to be potty trained for water slides and there are height restrictions. There are height limits even on some of, there are some water slides that are meant for kids. And then there are other water slides obviously that are yeah. meant for all ages and, over a certain height. And Daniel's pointing out it, it, it's because they don't use chlorinated water in the pools. They're using like basically seawater, salt water to fill the pools. And it's that's actually. How they keep the, the... I read it's actually Go not ahead, salt water, but it's not. Have, I, it, it, there is some chemical they're yeah. using. It isn't salt water, but it's like it's not the same level of chlorination that you use in swimming pools at home. Plus, it takes so long to like empty and clean the pools that it basically shuts down the pool for hours and hours. And so that's, I think, part of why they they don't let anyone yeah. with a diaper. Josh, Josh is asking, is it surprising there are no all ages hot tubs on the Triton class ships? I think it was surprising to the Disney fans. Uh, I will say as a design element for ships sailing the Caribbean, I've always been curious, like I, I mean, like a hot tub in the middle of 90 degree weather does not sound appealing to me. <laughs> so it's just, I also <laughs> think one of the reasons they may have done it, uh, I'm gonna, they have a tiered pool system, right? Where they have like a, a main, a couple of smaller kind of pools where kids can swim in on a higher deck. And they've got these like cooling pools that aren't very deep that you can kind of sit with water running down your back. Uh, and I think they had a main pool down at the, the bottom there, but yeah. Point, be point being, I think the hot tubs on the other ships just get overrun with kids That's watching true. funnel vision and they have to pull them out and take breaks. And so I think they were like, let's just not have hot tubs and see if we can spread the yeah. crowd out a little bit in the pools. I think that worked effectively, which reads to Josh's comment, other than the lack of hot tubs, the wish pool layout seemed to be a hit with kids and their adults. And I, I actually, it's gotten a lot of criticism. There are plenty of people who don't like it. I actually like it because it did spread people out pretty good uh and i could Plus, go it's really I, I hard like to, to sit on the i like to sit on the edge of the pool and watch funnel mm -hmm. vision and now i don't have to i can go sit in one of like the little like just lounging pools that doesn't have deep water and watch yeah. the funnel vision and other kids can be swimming so yeah plus the kids yeah. end up sitting too long in those everyone who sits in those hot tubs <laughs> ends up sitting in them for longer than they're supposed to by you know yeah. based on how hot they are but the kids especially and and on the particularly on the magic and the wonder because as brian pointed out there's like two hot tubs on both of those on the family pool deck that actually have great views to funnel vision i'll tell you nathan loves to sit in those hot yeah. tubs or even with just his legs in the hot tub but yeah they're probably those kids are in those hot tubs for way too long in the sun it's just yeah it's not probably speaking not a of very cooking good in idea. the hot tubs speaking of <laughs> cooking in the hot tubs we gotta talk about dinner uh let's talk about food uh so <laughs> um great segue there folks uh so um i do i do think this is another area where we tend to get a lot of questions questions like what will my kids be able to eat uh, do they have special menus? What are the food offerings like? Do they have to order off the kids' menu? What if they have, you know, dietary restrictions? Uh, should I do main dining, late dining? I don't know. Leslie, anything in there that you have thoughts around in terms of uh, dining on Disney Cruise Line with kids? Well, I'll start with the main versus late dining part because this is something that actually came up on our last cruise because I was a main dining person, right? Especially with younger kids, they get hungry, they need to go to bed. And that was what I thought we wanted. We booked our last Disney cruise very last minute 
and we're not able to get on even with like waitlisting all of it on whatever we're not able to get on to main dining we had to settle for late dining and it ended up being wonderful now that's with older kids they were what you yep. know 13 and, and 9 at the time of the cruise but i thought even a nine-year-old it would be too late for him and i mean it kind of is but he wasn't eating much of the meals anyway he just wanted to go and eat like the burger beforehand and then very quickly like sit with us at dinner and then go off to the kids club or do whatever he wanted to do so i would say you know it's not unless you have like toddlers who truly have a bedtime it's not as much of a make or break kind of thing to worry about because you know people who are booking that last minute they may not get the choice that they that they want and that's just the reality and i did like that it's less crowded at yes. late dining yeah. Because main dining is just really tight in a lot of those in a lot of those spaces. And we yeah. were on a very full spring break ship most recently. Even late dining, I felt like was too many people. I couldn't have imagined being yeah. on Maine. Yeah. Well, and us, I, I those of say, us on the West Coast going east, that early dining is also just so early. Mm -hmm. So I, I find that actually the late dining for us when we're on the East Coast just doesn't feel as late because our body's not completely adjusted to East Coast time. So... Yeah, I totally that was the point agree, I was but... going to make. So, <laughs> oh, sorry, yeah, I, Brian. I was just I no. I was I was going to say that like that the know know what time zone you're coming from because we've had both experiences, right? We've also yeah. had the experience where we went to Disney World beforehand. Nathan gets adjusted to the time zone, and now yeah, he's true. Like, head head on the now table. Now we're really hungry. Asleep. Yeah. 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 No, that's totally fair. But it's, in terms of the the food itself, I will say I have the world's pickiest eater. Just about my youngest and. Disney does as well as anybody can do. And that doesn't mean that they're going to, you know, have to, <laughs> they're going to find something they want all the time, but they're not going to starve on a Disney cruise. And if whatever is not hitting right for the main menu, there are the options to, you know, eat on the pool deck a little yep. bit beforehand, something like that. So, so we just sort of did a little bit of everything. I will say, I don't love on Disney Cruise Line that they don't have cabanas at dinner. Like that is, oh, yeah. I don't, I wish you didn't have to always have a seated dinner, especially for these longer cruises. And that was something I really felt like when we did sail celebrity, I really appreciated the difference when we did that. So that's something to keep in mind. You don't have that flexibility. I mean, you of course can get room service or something like that, but yeah, but, but no buffet, just, no you buffet. Can, yeah, yeah, you can, and you can get a burger or pizza, but that's it. Like the other stuff on the pool deck has basically shut down. Um, at dinner, you know, by like 6 p.m. So yeah, you're really, it is it is quite limited. And dinner is long. I always try to remind people, dinner on Disney Cruise Line is long. So whether you have, or it doesn't matter whether you have main di dining or late dining, it's a longer meal experience. You know, it's got the show, some of the, some of the restaurants have a show involved and those might be entertaining for your kids, but much like really young kids, I'm not sure that any of it works well for the really, really young kids. So one thing I want to point out, which is implicit, Tracy's got a comment here that she loved allowing her kids when they were younger to order and try whatever they wanted from any menu. And I just want to point out your kids are not limited to the kids menu. They have a kids menu every night. It's always got Mickey's mac and cheese and chicken fingers and pizza and that kind of stuff on there. Um, they tend to be pretty small portions. So if your kid is older and eats a lot, like you may need a couple kids meals to actually satisfy them. Yep. Uh, keep the French fries coming. I always find it comical. It comes with a vegetable. It's usually like two pieces of broccoli. <laughs> Jeff. Yep, and like, like one carrot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but but they can always order off the. They are free to order off the adult menu. They have paid a full cruise fare. There's no discount. And, and really vice versa. Kids. And vice versa. That's and true. I yeah. I'm I'm looking at you, Tracy, who orders the dessert in Arendelle off of the kids menu, and I copied her, and it was delicious. It was like some kind yeah. of s'mores dessert thing. But yeah, so adults, you absolutely, if you're not in the mood for whatever is on the adult menu, you can order that barbecue chicken pizza, and nobody's gonna look at you twice. You know, so order the, whatever you want. The other off thing, the, any menu. Sam, you mentioned shows. I want to talk briefly about the shows, right? So. Kids are welcome in the shows. Main seating, the show that corresponds to main dining is always kind of a little, you know, it's got more kids in it and it's a little uh, rowdier is the wrong word, but I can't think of the right word here in the moment. Um, uh, There's so, more you know, chair the, kicking. The, the, Let's put it that way. Yeah. They're, they're, they're very accommodating <laughs> of families coming to watch the shows. 
um, I want to offer one tip uh, and then see if any either of you have others. But one tip that we have uh, told people several times is if your kid's not super into the show and you don't want to have to worry about like getting up and leaving, right? You can sit toward the back. That's always an option, right? No one's going to look at you weird if you're leaving either in the middle of the, the show that corresponds to main dinner, really. But the tip I have is they show the shows on the stateroom TV. And so we have successfully leveraged that to like, watch the show with Nathan while he's sitting on the couch. If he wants to get up and wander around and move away from the show for a little bit, he can, then he can come back. Right. So um, that is also a friendly way to watch some of these shows, especially when your kids are, are younger, but Leslie, Sam, any tips for the shows on board uh, and, and bringing kids? I mean, I think they're, I think they're sensitive to the fact that kids are in the audience. It's nothing like going crazy. Um, certainly they've got confetti yeah. cannons in almost every show. It seems like the kids love. So there you go. <laughs> I, I, I have two, I have two tips. One is occasionally there will be a matinee show. It depends on your sailing, but every once in a while they'll show one of the shows at like 2 PM in addition to the evening shows. And that's a great opportunity if you have young kids and you think that they might be awake you know, more awake and better able to watch a show at 2 p.m. That is sometimes, but not, I will say not most of the time, but sometimes an option. Another thing I will tell people is if you have a kid that you're not sure will sit through the show, take an aisle seat, please. Take an aisle seat so that when you do inevitably get up like 20 minutes into the show or a half hour into the show, the shows are only an hour, hour and 15 minutes on the long end. You'll be able to get out more easily, right? Like if you need to leave nobody, like Brian said, nobody will look at you twice if you have to leave a show early because your kid's having a meltdown or doesn't want to sit through the show. Totally fine. But just try if you are concerned, if your kid's not someone who will sit through a show or you're not sure if they will, I would recommend either that or, as Brian mentioned, also sitting towards the back. I will tell you, we don't really bring Nathan to the shows because they are long and he doesn't want to sit through them. With maybe one exception, I think we've brought him to Seize the Adventure a couple of times. But that's the shortest show that they do in the main stage theater. It's only like 30, 35 minutes. So, and he's 10, but I know there's five-year-olds who can sit through a two and a half hour Broadway show. So it's really like it very just, it, child dependent. Yeah. It, it's know your kid. If they're into magic, mm -hmm. they'll probably sit through the entire magic act and have yeah. a great time. If they're not into it, then you probably won't. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah um, in terms I wanna... of no, 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 well, real quick, Brian, in terms of knowing your kid, I mean, try the first night show. If you haven't been on a Disney cruise, they haven't been to a yep. theater you know, be, be ready to exit and then don't push it. Like we found when my son was three, he was not going to make it through a show mm -hmm. in any way, shape or form. He wanted to be in the kids club. So we just would drop him and then we would see it. And by the time he was 10, now he's, he does musical theater. Oh, so I love sitting, it. Sitting through an hour long, you know, frozen, something like that dream come true. He loved every bit of the last cruise that we, um, that we went on every single show. He didn't miss it. I do see a comment from Daniel Lee, bring a popcorn bucket for cheaper refills. We were all about the popcorn bucket at the shows it. for sure. I love it. Absolutely. Yeah. And, I, and the refills are only like two bucks uh, for the, for them to refill. Now I will say some of the bartenders will tell you, you need to buy your bucket on board, but others will, are happy to fill the bucket that you brought with you. So. I did want to throw up Beth's comment about to refer back to the uh, the conversation we had earlier about the buffet and just say it was fabulous on Royal that they had that buffet open because we Nathan and I could pop in there for dinner and not have to worry about a, a dinner seating. So I 100% I agree with you, Leslie, that it'd be nice if they did that buffet. Um, I also wanted to, so what I want to do is round out the show with, we haven't talked anything about onboard activities, but we only have a few minutes left. And so I thought we would do this kind of rapid fire and each give kind Ooh. of... We'll go around twice. We'll each give two favorite activities on board for kids. And so, Leslie, you're the guest. Start with you. Take one off the board. What's one of your favorite activities to do with kids on board? Family karaoke. As I hinted, both my kids are performers and thankfully did not get my inability to sing Gene. They got it from their dad. So <laughs> we love the family karaoke. We did that every time it was offered on our last, on our last cruise. Love it. Sam? I'm going to say uh, family trivia. If you have a family of, I don't know, Parks fans or Marvel fans, like there are a ton of different family trivias around. Or I'll say family game shows slash family trivia because there's all these family game shows that are interactive as well. But yeah, go to, go to those. Those are fun. Yeah. Brian? 
All right, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give a sleeper hit in our household, which is family silent DJ or silent oh, disco. Oh yes, that is. If a you have not experienced silent disco on Disney Cruise Line, yeah. like for adults, it's really fun. Have a drink or two and watch the adults disco with no music in the room, uh, and then it's really uh, fun. It, it, for those of you who don't know silent disco, they give you headphones and they have three or four different channels on the headphones, so everyone's listening mm-hmm. to potentially different music and dancing. And then if you take the headphones off, all you see are people dancing with no music, and it's bizarre. With kids, it's, it's like twice the fun. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> so I say, so family silent DJ is one of my favorites. Leslie, coming back to you. All right, I don't even know if this is on every ship, but it was on our last sailing on the Wonder. Anyone can cook, oh. where one of the chefs comes out. It's you know, of course, Ratatouille themed. Comes out and they show how they make a certain dish, and then you get to eat it. So that was a lot of fun for for my kids to get sort of that first taste of learning how to to make fancier things. So that was a hit. I love it. I love it. It's not on every sailing, but they have offered it across most of the fleet. I'm not sure on the wish actually, but okay. So coming back to me, I have so many, um, but I'm gonna go with crafting because Nathan does love to do crafts and they have lots of family craft activities throughout the ship. Um, They're usually making like, I don't know, paper, like 3D Mickey and Minis, or I mean, you could even do like origami or towel folding, right? So there's, yeah, lots of different crafting activities. Ah, Tracy agrees with you and Ashley agrees with characters and family crafts. We didn't say anything about characters. I think characters is a great thing to do and the lines are much shorter than in the park. So that's a good one. Uh, I I can't believe none of us did Midship Detective Agency. One of the best things I think you could do. Or Uncharted Adventure now. Yeah, or Uncharted Adventure. One of the best things you do with kids. I absolutely agree. Uh, My pick, though, is going to be if you can get on the wish... The Incredicourse. I have never <laughs> seen kids have more fun than trying to race adults through the Incredicourse and adults just failing miserably unless they cheat. Yeah. So uh, I think that, that is such is a fun. great time uh, and a fun thing to watch. Uh, one other tip on an activity on board. We didn't get a chance to talk about it, but if you have very young kids, scope out the Jack Jack's diaper dash on yes. board. Yes. Your kid Even if can you compete. don't, go watch it. Yeah. If you don't have very yeah. little kids, go watch it. It's the fun. It's baby racing, and it's like the funnest thing to watch on board by far. Yeah, yeah. no question. Yeah. I love it. Well, we will have to leave it there. Uh, we've we've run over our hour. Uh, we'll have to leave it there. But before we hop off of this show. Leslie, remind folks how they can find and connect with you across your blog, the podcast, all that great stuff. Sure. So I have the blog tripswithtikes.com. Lots of Disney everything on there. So, uh, and then lots of family travel as well. I'm at Trips with Tikes everywhere on social media. And then I co host the D- Disney Deciphered podcast with Joe Chung, who I'm, you guys know as well. And we've been at it for, gosh, I think about six years. So, it's amazing. B- busy, wow. busy on that, on that front as well. It's mostly Disney World, but we've been doing, you know, Disney elsewhere. And of course, I squeeze in my Disneyland love every so <laughs> often on that podcast. But, but yeah, I love connecting with folks. So please, feel free to, to reach out to me. I will say next up for me is Tokyo Disney in a little over a week. I am I'm so, so excited. Jealous. This yeah. is the second to last Disney destination I have. The only one I have not been to is Shanghai after oh this my one. God. So That's really excited. awesome. Yeah. Well, we are looking forward to hearing about that on Disney Deciphered. Leslie, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, friends who are watching, we will be back next week at the same time same place, 5.30 Pacific, 8.30 Eastern. Uh, it will be an April 1st show, and that's all we're going to say about it. See, um, but we now will you've be ruined jo- it. Now you've <laughs> ruined it. You've ruined it already. <laughs> uh, but we, we will be joined by uh, Alex, the second dad, to the right. So it will, be, yes. uh, it will be a great show. Please join us next week. Again, same time, same place. And thank you all for joining us. We will see you real soon. See ya.